So we've got a YouTube account. I don't have anything really to show for it. You want to upload a video. We've got this sample video that we made last week that you can use. You can choose to do this or not, because it's my video. It doesn't really have anything to do about your business, but you can delete it later if you want. Now the video in question is in the network folder, so before I try to upload it, I'm going to minimize my windows and go up to computer, window, classroom data, and then our class campus social 3, sample video finished. Inside of sample video finished, I'm going to drag the final video which is the one that says video 2017811. I'm going to drag that to the desktop. So that's the finished version. That's the one that I've added the sound, the text. That's what I want to upload to YouTube. The MP4 one, right? Yeah. Okay. The one that says video M WMV, that's the one before edits. Okay, so I copy that to the desktop temporarily. In my YouTube account, on the top right corner, I have an upload button, an up arrow. When I click that, I can select the video. Well, here I also have the ability to import photos from Google Photos, if I have that. I can import photos into a sort of a slideshow. I can activate live streaming. I have the video editor, which they're going to delete soon, or slideshow. From here, this is where I get the extra option of scheduled. So at the moment that I'm uploading it, that's when I can set scheduled. So when you upload a video, set scheduled and every other option. So, um, on the top right corner you have a little up arrow for upload. So you can set this right now before I choose the file or you can set it after you upload the file or you can set it completely at any time. Let's say I'll leave it alone as public and I'll click that big arrow there. And my movie is on the desktop. We have pretty good internet connections, so this uploads pretty fast. But at home, you're going to see that your internet speeds do not compare to ours. Usually, colleges and universities have really fast internet speeds. Consumers at home usually don't. I have Cox Cable, I've had AT&T, whichever you have. They often sell you the speed of the download of the account, never mentioning the upload speed. So Cox and AT&T, they're going to tell you, oh, 50 megabyte download, 100 megabyte download. Read the fine print, upload is 2 megabytes, 10 megabytes if you're really lucky. I have like a 25 megabyte download and upload speed 5 megabytes. When I had like the really, really cheap plan, I had like a 10 megabyte download speed and 1 megabyte upload. What do those numbers mean? Again, it's about how fast this happens. The download speeds these companies, you know, tell you you're going to download that Netflix movie so fast, you're going to download that software so fast, but they purposefully make it really slow to upload because a lot of software piracy happens when people upload stolen software. So if you're paying for Cox or AT&T, Time Warner, whatever, this is the part where then you're going to see say, I might want to pay a little bit more. Because if you're uploading a lot of videos, it's going to take time to upload. This one minute video uploaded in like 10 seconds. So when you've got slower internet connections, one minute video can upload in five minutes uh, or longer. 
and I upload videos that are 10 minutes long, 20 minutes, sometimes for some of these classes I upload videos that are, you know, 2 gigabytes. These are huge videos. I start the upload, I go have dinner, I come back and it's almost done because they're so big and your upload speeds are often a lot slower at home. It might not matter, you just let it upload and then it'll be done. So this uploaded, it also processed it, and then you get some thumbnails. I get three possible thumbnails to show off what my video is. But you may see that on many other YouTube videos, they have a custom thumbnail with some text, with an arrow right there, um, you know, the logos, this text. Once you verify your account, you will have a third option to, to uh, upload your own custom thumbnail. So I highly recommend that because you saw on the PMD Interactive, most of our videos had a custom thumbnail. See this? All of these were designed in Photoshop. This graphic and text, this doesn't appear anywhere in the video. This is a shot from the video, yeah. This is a custom graphic. Almost all of them are custom graphics. You would get the option to upload a custom thumbnail once you verify. So, uh, Yeah, let me write it right here. So, uh, after verifying your account, you can upload a custom thumbnail set it as 1920 by 1080 pixels, JPEG or PNG, less than 2 megabytes. So usually that PNG will be too big, too high quality. So JPEG often works. So these thumbnails themselves are an art and a science because you're going to see them in a variety of sizes. 1920 by 1080 is the size of an HD TV, but it's going to shrink it down to a variety of sizes depending on what screen people are looking at, what device they're looking at. So you have to think in terms of, does my thumbnail look big, small? Even though you've got a big image to work with, does it look good, small? Because most of the time these thumbnails will be visible on a small screen. Let me say design your thumbnail. Design your thumbnail for a small size. I don't know what size this is technically, but that is 19 by 20 shrunk down. That text is unreadable. So if I design this in Photoshop, I took a picture of myself and I wrote text and it looked nice and big in 1920. It's going to look terrible when it's uploaded. So you can zoom in and you can zoom out as you design your, your, your thumbnail and zoom out so that it's small, like this size. If you look at the examples here, this is a slightly larger size. And even that larger size, this needs to be redesigned. Can't read that. Look, look at how big this text is. That's probably like 200 point size. In Word, you're usually writing 12 point or 14 point. It's probably 12 point, unreadable. It's probably like 100 point, it's probably 200 point. So think in terms of designing your thumbnails that they will be small. Also think in terms that the bottom right corner, some amount in the corner, is going to be covered by the time. So notice the length of the video is covering this up. Mm. So there's a little bit of a dead area on the bottom right corner. I can't tell you the exact dimensions. I'm sure someone has that somewhere. Like uh, if you look up YouTube thumbnail sizes and such, someone will probably have the exact pixel dimensions. Now this is the old 1280, so I don't trust that one. But anyway, um, design your thumbnail for small size. So. If you use text, only use a little bit and make it big. Avoid important stuff at bottom right. It will be covered 
by the time. It's not so bad on some of these. You can be that word still, but when the thumbnail is even smaller, it'll cover more. You may also see a thumbnail that's larger like that. And as you watch videos, <clears throat> you different, see different sizes. Because the ones that it automatically generates for you here usually are not that great. It picks a random spot near the beginning of your video, near the end, and somewhere in the middle. Usually you're not, it's not going to pick a very good one. I would want to upload my custom-made graphic. Where can you do it after uploading? After you verify your account, you'll have one more option. Oh, okay. Title. The title of the video is borrowed from the name of the file. You want to change this right away. This is not helping you. This generic name is not helping you get found. I will want to write here something like Tech Review Tuesday. Zoom H2N. That's the item. So people would be searching for the for the Zoom. The the name of your series or the name of your channel and such is not really necessary because that name of your channel will appear in other spots on your channel. So there is a limit, not really a limit, but at a certain point YouTube will tell you your name is a little too long. It's gonna cut off. So I would try to keep the name at the maximum as long as this box is. Going past the box, the name is too long. You can make any length there, really. But if it's too long, it's going to cut off writing your first Android app. Everything you need to know. Okay, that fits. Some other ones. Hello World Android app on Visual Studio run on AVD. Some of these get cut off because it's too long. So if you keep it within the size of that title box, you should be safe. Title. Keep it within the size of the box and put the relevant keywords there. It's not quite relevant to put the name of my company or series. Perhaps a better version here is Zoom H2N Review. People might search for that, the review of this. I could search, what's this for? How to podcast with the Zoom H2N. That's text that people could be searching for. This is hard to figure out what to write in the beginning when you start off. But as you upload these videos, and then as you check your analytics, this will tell you what are the keywords people search for. What was a video that suggested your video? I can read its title and borrow some ideas from there. So as you get these analytics, you can then figure these keywords out better. But take a short sentence to write what the video is about, and then you can do a long sentence with all the other keywords you can think of. So, with the best podcast equipment, you can record great, po great podcasts. With the, with the best audio equipment, you can record great podcasts. Find uh, or uh, watch watch our review on the Zoom H2 and a very affordable microphone. So I can write as much as I want here, and I should write several sentences for keywords to help me get found. Um, I like to add chapters if it's a long video, so that's again simply just you know writing you know chapters. Click. Click to jump to chapters. And then I put the time at zero minutes five seconds. I say something. At 
0 minutes 32 seconds is something else, which is more keywords. At 1 minute 1 second is something else. And those time codes will automatically become links. I can add a real address uh, by the microphone now. And I put in there my address, maybe my affiliate link. Maybe I have a partnership, and when they buy the, the item, I, I, I make money off of that. So on Amazon.com microphone. That will become an active link when I publish. This box here can take as much text as you want, but approximately the first three lines is what's visible before a person can click Show More. So as an example of any of these videos, you know, looking at Yeah, one of our videos this is what I was saying about show more. You see, from this view, show more looks different, doesn't it? When I was at that other screen, show more looked different. Mm -hmm. So there's approximately three lines before the text ends, and some people will never realize there's more. Maybe the show more will stand out to them and they'll click. Maybe I can be obvious and say, click show more for chapters. Click show more for chapters. So these first three sentences should be the ones that would be visible. Then they can show more to see the chapters. Tags. So again, more keywords for this individual video. Uh, looks like you separated with commas here. So let's say review, comma, uh, zoom H2N, comma, uh, podcasts, comma. I can remove a tag, just press the X. So all three of these are very important for you to help you get found. Here's where I also see public, unlisted, private, scheduled. So this video is going to have that URL. There's a video with that unique address, capitalization does count. So that link is to that video. <clears throat> If I have it set to public, I can also connect Twitter, and this will get sent to Twitter. Unlisted, it doesn't go to those other accounts. Private, it doesn't go out to other accounts. And here, who can view? Here's where you can share individually, putting in email addresses, but again, it's not a very good system. Private is just private and scheduled. You can put this to to be visible next Monday at 8 a.m. And when it goes to YouTube publicly next Monday at 8, it'll also go to Twitter if I want. I don't see Facebook there because YouTube and Facebook are not friends. But on a different screen, you would be able to send it to Facebook. On the share, um, can you put multiple email addresses or just one at a time? You mean under private? Under private is where you add the different email addresses. Okay. Um, yeah. But when you share, can you just do one at a time? Or is it multiple? This share right here? Yeah. Um, it, it can be multiple, yes, on, on a separate line. Yep, so different different lines. So if you have
have like a database of like a thousand emails or topics that you would have to them all there? If they're in the right format, um, separated by lines, sometimes the database stores it in a special way. So it's got to be super plain text, line by line. Um, there's no maps? I don't think so. I haven't tried to see what's the maximum. It might say in the help screen. There might be a max because then they think it might be spam. Then I've also got here playlist. So right now my video will be public. Everyone can view it. Everyone can find it and watch it. Um, and if I'm going to upload a variety of videos in the same topic, I could set up playlists. I currently don't have any playlists. I can create one right here. This could be called reviews. So now this video will be in the reviews playlist. Playlists are visible when a person is at your channel. They will see playlists. All of the videos on that topic are grouped together. You can have more than one playlist. You can have your video in more than one playlist. Or no playlists. You don't need playlists, but I recommend you do use them to organize. There's a tab up here for translations. So if I set that the language of what I've written here is English, then I can set it to another language. This will not, however, automatically translate your description to another language. You have to provide it. Advanced settings. Those defaults that I set previously can be changed here on an individual basis. On the previous screen, I had set allow comments once they've been approved. Well, this video is way too controversial, so I'm going to say don't even allow comments. I don't want people to say anything. Or let them automatically be visible. Here's something that's not in that other screen. Sort comments by the top comment. People can um, vote on comments and reply to comments and that creates a system that uh, the best comments would appear first. And I think this is fine. Good comments will go to the top, and the good vibes will create more. I never really changed this one. People can change it themselves if they want when they watch your video. Uh, syndication. If I had the option of monetization turned on, it would say show my video everywhere or only show my video where I can make money. You usually want it everywhere. Captions. If you have captions in your video, subtitles, you can set this. This is kind of optional. You can set this, and probably the one you want is this one. This content has never aired on television in the U.S. This YouTube video, you never uploaded, you never, probably you never showed it on TV. So you would select that one. Allow embedding. I want my video to go to more people, so I want to leave that on. I want people to, to share my video on their blog, so allow my video to be embedded on their blog. My subscribers, let them know. Let them know when I've, when I've uploaded this video. You can set age restriction. I believe it's you have to be at least 13, maybe 18 that this video can't be seen by certain people of a certain age, um, but then you can't monetize it. If you need to change your category, there it is. If you need to add a location as well, language, allow people to help you translate it, yes or no. I don't think there's any purpose at all for the recording date. 
you can set whatever date. You can set this date uh, when this was recorded. Show your stats or not. And is this video 3D? They're going to take that away. You're, they're not going to have 3D video on YouTube anymore, I guess. And is there, is there a paid promotion in your video? This video, I am promoting this thing, but they didn't pay me to do a video. If they did pay me, I should check that on for transparency purposes. Because if you did get paid and you didn't turn that on, that could cause problems with your monetization. When you verify, you will also have one more tab here. I don't have it to show you, but I've got, I would have one more tab, which is monetization, for you to set a couple of different options about I'll allow this kind of ad or that kind of ad, but not what ad. Simply show an ad at the beginning, yes or no, an ad at the end, yes or no, an ad in the middle, yes or no. The more of those that you turn on, the more possibility for you to profit, but you can't set what ads. Declaration. If you're promoting a product on your own website so you can make money, do you check that? Or is that only if you pay by another party? I'm not sure, oh, but, pro but probably from third parties. If you've got if it's your own product that you're doing for yourself, probably not. Okay. This is more for third parties if someone else pays you for an endorsement. Okay. So I think click anything just to put up like a ten seconds video. So there's a couple of a there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, that one sounds like it's a it's an ad embedded in their own video. They made the ad themselves. They did the first part, they said we'll be right back, then they recorded their own ad and put it in their thing and then recorded the rest. So that's an embedded ad. That's not the same as these monetization ones. Um, the monetization ones, YouTube will randomly put an ad on your on your video and you make money from that. It sounds like the one that you're talking about, they talked about their own business or their own partner in a way that they're making money in a different way without YouTube's system. So they created an, an, an it's called I believe it's called a mid-roll ad in the middle of the of your of your video. They created it themselves. It's kind of advanced. So those are the various options when you upload. The more you uh, know about what these are, the better you can set them. And again, there's a fourth one of monetization. Once you verify, you'll have that option. Basically, turn on all of the ad options to profit the most out of it. And then um, that's it. So I'll publish. After I've published it, now I have the ability to share it to Facebook, Google+, Blogger, Reddit, Tumblr, Pinterest. So from that other screen, it would automatically go to YouTube and Twitter. But I can still then send it elsewhere from here or copy the address of this video. Because I might leave this screen and never remember how to get back to it. Well, if I go back to the video manager, there's the video which I can go back to edit and get other options here. Promote it. That's paying to boost it. You can download my original file. I cannot download anyone else's but mine. Edit these other things. Kind of advance things here and there. Clean edit. I can go back to edit these items. And I get some of these other ones too. These enhancements that never really work that well. I can add audio to the video after the fact, but it's not as good as doing it in Movie Maker. Editing subtitles, and a couple more advanced things we're not really going to get to, end screens, 
and cards. It's just more ways to sort of promote your own video. So the nuts and bolts of how to use the YouTube channel, the important things are under these various channel settings, setting each video with its own particular title and description, that's the important stuff. Uh, as we wrap up, I'll mention YouTube itself can also help you uh, create content by searching keywords and seeing what other videos exist, and then you get a different idea. Let's say I simply search for the Zoom H2. As I'm starting to simply type that keyword, it says these other possible keywords or ideas that might be useful for me. Zoom H2 review, test, how to use it with drums. Let's say I just search. And I'll get a bunch of other reviews from other people. Zoom H2 handy digital audio recorder unboxing and review. So they've got the keyword of unboxing and review there at the top. This one's simply the name of the product, that it's lower than that one. But it's got more views. So there's some algorithm that it's not always exactly one-to-one. -one. But this has got more views, but is in second place. But most likely b and is more famous. Leonidas, this is one year ago. This is five years ago. So it's not always exactly that you will see views will always result in a number one. There's many factors. And people can further filter the most recent upload, length, uh, upload date. So there's mine, three minutes ago. There's one from a day ago. Two days ago. So using search itself is very useful to get reconnaissance information and um, figure out your next video. Keywords. So to wrap up, uh, again, check out socialmediaexaminer.com. Check out their uh, other tutorials and advice on YouTube, ideas for videos, further ideas for optimization and such. But um, if you've made it this far to the end of three months, you have a lot uh, to think about and a lot to practice on. Um, everything that I've recorded for these classes will be available online still. You can watch them as many times as you want. You're free to take the classes again come only on a day that you want to brush up on Twitter, let's say, or only brush up on Pinterest. Email me to know those days exactly. Um, but that's uh, the end of our class.